Hi everybody, welcome back to Terra Firma Craft, um, episode 114 with me Sid, and uh, I'm just I'm just poddling around at the moment, I've got some things I need to do, um, and first thing I need to do is just go and put a little bit of fruit away, because we're carrying quite a bit around with us, and it kind of seems silly, <laughs> cluttering up our inventory slots with it. Not the most exciting start. But I have got a plan for today. So we have last episode we tried to um what's the word I'm looking for? We tried to work around the uh iron problem. The battery technically the steel problem, but the iron problem by sifting a whole load of iron bearing um rocks and getting a whole load of materials including a whole load of iron now we got a lot of other stuff that's not to be sniffed at so this is all good um and we have got a bottleneck here um in that this is a thing however there was an idea um in there, there was an idea put in the comments and this was uh, from rob williams saying if you get a high looting weapon you can turn your zombie farm into a pig iron farm and of course you do get iron drop well actually pig iron drops from zombies with looting um, now the problem is i really don't have much lapis lazuli um we do get eight per one of those from the sag mill so that's a plus so you know i'm pre I'm prepared to try almost anything in just to avoid going digging the damn stuff up. <laughs> that sounds bizarre, but there you go. Um, because most of the iron in this area has been exhausted, we're going to have to head off this direction to attack that. Now, the, there is some surface lapis here, which is not a million miles away. So I think we've got food, we've got picks, we've got um, we've got drunky, and if we go and seal up our thing, we can go and grab some uh, lapis. Now, what I would like to do before I do that, however, is let this process through, um, because you know. Damn it! I hate them things when they do that. Um, where? where oh, oh well. Hello. That's an interesting effect. Um, so it's there on the other side of that wall. How on earth do I get that? Hup. Got it. <laughs> right. So, I am going to just spend a quick moment. There you go, Trunky. Have a, have a barrel. Not that we haven't got three of those, but there you go. Uh, in fact, did that? What did I put in this one? Just. Oh, this was, oh yeah, we need to empty that as well. Okay. Um, well, that's a thing, but for now. So I've got to empty that, and I I would like to harvest this lot before winter gets around and it pops off. And while we're at it, let's try that. These, these should be weed proof actually now, because they're both strength 10, but let's see how they go but um so i'm going to do a little bit of pottering around in the uh, first instance just to let those uh, that um smelter hoofer get to the point of you know having done everything and uh and i'll be back in a second all right um everything's harvested uh we've got another 32 pig iron here which takes us up to a reasonable amount. We'll take um, another stack of wrought iron and uh, we shall go and pop that in the furnace so it can be working while we're gone because obviously this area is chunk loaded. 
it's all pre-done and you are on so it's doing its thing now the last thing i need to do is prepare some meals for myself uh oh, and also that deal with that um but yeah we are what what is the season now anyway uh early winter so we're getting to the point nine six nine that one then Nice six ten even I should say. Um, put that in there for now. Along with that, everything's good. So need to sort out some food, uh, which we we desperately need grain. So that one probably. Bu -bu -bu. And we'll take what we got here plus one more of these and, and that should be enough to keep us we're not going far and we'll get the lapis then we're going to sit there and make a weapon specifically for this it's going to be a scythe i think because they obviously make a certain degree of sense in this uh, scenario uh, we're going to get it all the way up to maximum looting yeah now in terms of where we're headed we're headed that way so might as well walk <laughs> it's not that far and uh, we've got the boots of walking so you know when you've got boots that are made for walking walking is what they're going to do uh yeah i will see you that was a failed jump i'll see you when we get there and here we are. Now the lapis itself is not in the most accessible of places, certainly from the top anyway. Um, but I think we can work. Uh, we can work around the limitations of this. Um, I just think we're going to need a little bit of timber to start off with. Uh, we probably should have a bite to eat because we're looking a bit low. I'm not sure what time it is. It's just gone midday. It really isn't far at all. Um, there is there's, there's some water there, so we're, we're good for that. All we need to do, I think, is... I mean, I've got these, but again, why waste good treated wood when you can just come in and in fact let's just uh, there we go let's double it up so we've got more even more scaffolding material to work with and we'll just come across here like uh so grab these two and then i can work my way down i think uh I probably may go and break that over there as well just to give myself uh, an easy way or relatively easy way up at the very least there we go that will that will make life easy for getting out and uh, now it's just a matter of mining some lapis uh, I say we'll get these two. So they're, they're relatively easy. Uh, there we go, and we can come down here. Did that fall? I don't know. I may have mined that one for absolutely no purpose whatsoever, but it doesn't really matter. What we're after is just a load of this. I might as well, I think probably we'll mine as much as there is here if I can, or as much as I can certainly find. Um, yeah, I'll be back in a bit. Alright, I there's still loads left, there's so much resource here, it is, it is actually not funny, I, I've got tons. Um, and I got bored of mining lapis, so, you know, uh, I thought, that's probably enough. Let us get the hell out of here and uh, return home. And because we're within walking distance, I think it's only only fair that I actually walk this rather than uh, warp. Um, you know, there's no there's no real. 
I, I still I still feel guilty homing whenever I go out on a thing. I know, you know, I know everybody. That, well, the majority of you are okay with it, and uh, you know the rationale behind it for the just the sheer amount of hours it takes traveling. Um, you know, really does kind of drive home just how much effort it takes. But uh, you know, we we can we can make this trip on foot. This is not a biggie. So uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll do that. And uh, I will see you back at the ranch. All right, and in the time it took me to do that, we've done a little, a little under half a stack of pig iron. I think we're going to have to make another alloy smelter. We're going to have to kind of uh, speculate to accumulate, as the old saying goes but uh, we definitely want one of those out we'll leave that there and pick you up and we're gonna get one of those take some of that and bang um, we'll pop that there for a moment right yeah uh, while that is sagging uh, milling milling sagging sagging probably milling probably it's a sag mill but it you know it's probably more like a milling than a sagging um does it really matter not really um we shall uh well we'll sleep the night off and uh we'll get the forge going and we are going to make ourselves a shiny shiny new scythe not that sort of scythe, though, a Tinker's Construct Scythe. Because a Tinker's Construct Scythe, even though it's a, an edged weapon, doesn't register for skeletons. And, or at least it doesn't seem to. So that's a bonus. What to make a scythe out of? Uh, I, do, I know I have not... Uh, I might have enough for a manual inside. Do I want to waste it on a, a um, all of that on a scythe though? I don't know. Eight. I think it's going to have to be manual in. Um, now let me just double check. What do I need to put a scythe together? Tough tool binding, rods, and that. Okay. How am I for paper? I. I've got a paper tough rod, so that's one. That is a wooden tough rod, that's two. Uh, mithril scythe head. Ooh, might go there actually. It's got a good durability. There and there. And maybe. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let me just go and have, uh, have a look at. Thormium. No, not there. There. How much thormium have I got? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, four. Five. Let us just go and check this out. So we can use you. To make molten thormium, molten thormium can be cast into those items. So a heavy tool rod, heavy it's not there. A tough binding costs three. So all right. So at this point, my audio decided to crap out um, for the rest of the video, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to try and do a um, voiceover, but. Um, yeah, so we've got the tough binding. I think we'd. Uh, I think that was everything we needed. Um, and yeah, I, it's really annoying because I normally I do test recordings every time I uh, before I start recording just to make sure my audio is working. But this one crapped out halfway through a sample and then just didn't come back for the entire the entire session. So uh, hmm, yeah, one of those one of those weird ones, I'm afraid, but. That should be everything, I think. And uh, we are going to whack it in. Mithril uh, side with thormium paper and wooden tool binding with a massive durability. As uh, you can see, that 22,000 durability. That is ludicrous. 
but there you go uh, oh it did actually uh, it's all right a bit later on I uh, wonder about the sharpness and uh, I meant to look back and see what the recording was but that's done it so then we're going to start off with the modifiers and of course the first modifier we're going to stick on there is going to be a ball of moss can't go wrong with a ball of moss and uh, then I realize I've got some stuff so you know go back put it away Head over to get the old uh, lapis, and I'm going to need considerably more lapis than that, it turns out. But you know, we get there eventually. 450 lapis in total we have to put on this thing, so uh, there's a little bit of fertling around. And uh, I'll try and keep my eye on the timer on the video because I'm not very good at these post. <laughs> post video uh, commentaries but obviously I'm damned if I'm going back to do this because this this is an interesting uh, experiment that we're doing and without giving too much away at the start I realised that that's a crazy way of doing it and so I go ahead and start off with a nice block of lapis which doesn't take for some reason I hate it when it does that on the third one but there you go bang and get all them done. And uh, eventually we'll end up with the lapis going on there as well. And uh, and then we need more lapis. So off we go. Alright, so at this point we've got I think all of the lapis that we had. Um, I apologise for my post commentary, it is terrible. Um, however, push on, so uh, we, we whack on the lapis, this takes us to 390, and then we just need another six blocks to uh, to complete that. Which, you know, in my usual, usual failing to remember a two digit number, 30 seconds after I've done it, I have to go back and double check, but we'll get the six and almost get the six. There you go, there's the six. Combine that <coughs> with the uh, scythe, and of course, what we end up with is a Fortune 3 Looting 3 scythe with a ludicrous amount of durability. So at that point, I decided that I wanted to see um, how much sharpness would make a difference. Now, the, the the thing that caught me off guard was the fact that we only had that, that entire fortune upgrade only required one modifier, whereas I assumed it would require three, one for each level. But because the sharpness one certainly does, you know, you, um, you put the first layer on, and then each one afterward is a modifier. It just seems a little bit inconsistent. So, so you need 72 to get it up there and we're, we're going to basically go away in a moment and make ourselves some blocks and uh, apply some sharpness. I kind of get a bit confused by this because of course what I uh, saw was that the, the sharpness took it up to 186 uh, for one level of sharpness. Um, but for some reason, I thought it was 185 beforehand. I'm not entirely sure why. End of Um So at that point, I added a diamond and an emerald into it as well, just to give it a particularly ludicrous amount of uh, durability. I think it was something like 33,000 durability. I can't remember. I, I think at some point, I actually do show the durability. I'm trying to remember from last night's recording, but clearly I'm just rattling on about it at the moment. I'm talking about something. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. 33,868. Um, and it has you know, 186 damage on it. So I could have put more sharpness on. But at that point, we check the thing. We've still got 11 blocks of uh, stuff to go. So we are going to uh, eat, drink, and be merry. And then we are going to take... A quick trip over to the uh, the Hoofer farm, the uh, the mob farm, 
and once I've picked everything up and got everything we need and had a quick sleep and of course it's you know it's not that far away in the same way the lapis wasn't that far away so at that point it's uh, it's a good point to just go for a little stroll and uh, yeah all the stuff do I need to oh yeah that was right um, <clears throat> so I I also decided to take a few things with me because one of the things with this looting oh, and yeah that was unintentional well it was intentional but I had not realised so yeah we'll get a red steel bucket at some point to fix that but what we're going to do is we're going to take a bucket of lava with us um, don't know why it doesn't want me to take that one but that's fine we'll have that one and we're going to take a some iron bars with us because what I want to do is make a system to dispose of some of the junk because we're going to get a lot of rotten flesh and arrows and bones and they don't really have a great deal of value so you know no point to have them so nice little stroll over to the uh, mob farm yeah I think I wondered why, well, what was that on the floor but it was just a brain <coughs> pardon me and uh, you know, take a stroll over. We have to kind of skirt around because of that stupid bloody um, th thing in the uh, guardian thing. So we take a long way round. We get into the mob farm, whoop, and at that point, my first job is to kind of wander, wander, wander around rapidly. Now, the first job is to take out the blocks there and then we go down and take that out and I decided to drop it down a little bit further I just don't want these blocks catching fire from the lava so take it down two can't quite jump out at that height so we're gonna take another block out pop a blob of lava down there lovely and then we'll uh, we'll block that in and just to keep things simple we're going to stick bars on it and then we can just drop anything we don't want can go straight down there so armed with that we're going to spend basically an hour grinding this mob farm with the shiny new thing and uh I think I empty that and make another chest and there's a few other bits and pieces we do but the main thing is we're going to spend one hour grinding and at the end of an hour or almost the end of an hour this is the last batch of mobs we uh, I actually turned off the mob sounds because well, you know, an hour of that going on I was watching a film while it was doing as you do um, you come in here and obviously get quite a few levels at the same time now the fun thing with this has been basically processing all of that but you can see how much pig iron we got like th nearly three stacks um, a lot of co copper coins and quite a few other bits and pieces but what I've been doing is stacking the carrots together the potatoes don't stack so they go in the uh, in the lava as do all of the other items and I'm really I think what I may do is just bring over the absolute essentials next time I do this because I get a little bit phobic about throwing in something I actually want um, because you know that would be bad <laughs> kind of goes without saying doesn't it and uh, yeah we got lots and lots of nice shiny iron and we're going to take with us the uh these um, bags in a moment we're not going to bother with the coins and stuff but there's some rare treasure bags uncommon and common so those will come with us the heads and stuff can stay for now and uh, we're going to head back to the ranch and start to do something with this things now <clears throat> 32 sorry three stacks of pig iron for uh, an hour's work 
is if it were just iron wouldn't be potentially that great because obviously I can go and find an iron vein mine that and in an hour I can probably get eight or ten stacks of iron but you've got to remember that 32 pig the each stack of 32 pig iron is not only uh, 32 um, iron but it's also 32 coal dust 32 flux and then of course I've had to sit there and process it for a, a length of time in the uh, alloy furnace to get over <clears throat> so it's considerably it's considerably more than just um, 32 iron it's actually quite a lot of saved time so it's not a bad way of doing it for steel certainly just because of the speed of the uh, production of the pig iron in the alloy furnace it takes and it takes a long time power's not a problem because it's cheap and well it's free who oh, brains and uh yeah but that gives us a <clears throat> another system and i think i'll probably use this going forward to pull some more steel together and as we go over there you can see that those 11 certainly finished in that time but that's fine <clears throat> so at this point what we need to do is we need to turn all of the pig iron into steel um, we can also drop off I was going to go, uh, put another 32 on but I think you know we don't have the coal dust ready so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll I decided to leave that but we drop off that bit of uh, iron and then we go and start hammering that using the red hammer head in the thing to convert it to steel or actually high carbon steel and then steel because you have to go through twice um so take that one out pop that in and i do need to make um do need to make a hopper for this and I, I will get around to that at some point but you know this is not a biggie and it does its thing and then we chuck another stack on and we wait for that and uh, I think not long after this I decided to say I'll be back in a moment I do and uh, and there's a slight issue and that is I will demonstrating here in a moment this particular big iron if you go through the recipes there's all sorts of things you can do with it and yep lots of things lots of exciting stuff completely unrelated i don't know why i chose to waffle on about that but there you go but clearly there is the red steel hammer two things and we can do other stuff with it yeah yeah we can do other stuff with it. yeah come on john just get to the cut to the no we right yep yep come on just oh man god i'll tell you something this guy goes on However, this stuff that we got from chucking uh, from the mob farm, well, you'll see. There's no recipes for it. Now, the fix for that is really simple, um, but we'll demonstrate it just to prove the point because, you know, it goes straight through, no stampy stampy, and there's a pig iron. So how you fix that is ingots you can stack in the world and if you stack these ones that up oh, not like that if you stack these ones up then uh, when you then pick them up they take on the same properties as normal pig iron now unfortunately i chose to do this right next to a vacuum hopper so quite a lot of it ended up going in there but it doesn't matter but you see now it's taken on the same properties as those ones so yeah that was a simple enough fix and uh and obviously all of that could then be placed through the um, press um, twice because you know that's how it works and eventually we ended up with steel so yeah useful tip there and we just waited and had a bite to eat while we're waiting for that there you go excitement eh I want a drink of course so once we've done all that we've got all of the steel 
And the next thing we needed to do was um, go over to our chest and pick up our immersive engineering book. Because my I decided basically that we were going to make stop constructing this and just put a, a chest aside with all of the bits in so we needed 12 blocks of steel for that and nine blocks of steel for that which of course is 21 blocks of steel so 21 blocks of steel i think i yeah i got a couple of chests so this was going to be and then i had a little on r about where to put it but in the end just decided to pop it there so that was going to be our position where we were going to keep things and we're going basically over the next episode or two build up the um all the components for the machines and in this particular one we're just going to start off with the 21 blocks of steel and the easiest way well the only way the only way to do that is to smelt them in the smeltery and then cast them which is what we do it's uh pretty straightforward really <laughs> so taking that you know that goes that first lot was three the next lot was six and obviously turn that on and that's going to be casting blocks straight out as as soon as they're done stick the next lot in rinse and repeat until you've got 21 of them um, and I was a little bit unsure whether I would actually have enough there to do this but I actually turned out to have almost enough plus some so there we go we had 21 blocks and we've still got a little bit of uh, steel left over so that's good I'm gonna need a lot more and uh, grab the books I couldn't buy this by this point you know I couldn't remember how many I'd said so it was 9 and 12 I can remember now you know uh, so that would be nine for the wheel. Um, yeah, nine. Idiot, there you go. And then, of course, we start to... Then we need to the realms of... Well, we need scaffolding. We also need the light and heavy engineering blocks, which is why I've decided that I will probably just grind the pig iron by killing mobs, killing zombies. Um, it's possible that we could find a better place to build a zombie spawner in one of the, um, the roguelike dungeons, but... You know, that was that's another thing, and maybe we would do it going forward. But on that note, we uh, kind of managed to get ourselves pretty much through. We got a little bit of stuff already, and uh, you know, we knew we got some steel. So there was a little bit. There's two more found. In the moment, I'd be like, "Oh, look, more steel." But of course, all that iron, we're also going to need for the um, light engineering blocks. So I don't want to convert all of the iron over to steel, because then I'll be stuck without iron. And of course, what I can't get as much of as easily is iron from zombies. So yeah, that was it really. And uh, apologies for the, um, for the lack of audio. We just kind of ran these bags through just to see what we get. It's the usual thing. We don't really get anything overly useful. Uh, a little bit of knowledge and then the rare one gives us some other stuff which to be fair would have been pretty cruel if it was vanilla I mean protection two soul bound one golden boots woohoo unless of course you've got a disenchanting mechanism but we don't so there you go um, a few bits of potions apples things and uh, wow <laughs> Anyway, and that was it. So uh, we'll carry on next time with that and hopefully my audio will survive. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.